when you were sitting on this couch, you, like you were really dragging at, at, in your first two years. We, the, the, uh, as you know, and uh, you've done breakfast radio. Yeah, the early right? morning. So yeah. you, you know what it's like, right? It's a complete lifestyle shift, right? You're getting up at three, four, five o'clock. I got up at three. Yep. Right? And I was in here by half four. Like, your, your sleep patterns are destroyed. You're supposed to be in your deepest REM. Because you had a desk to hide the, the, the bad fake tan. Fair play. <laughs> and uh, I remember in the first year or two, like, I, was, I felt like I'd been hit by a train all the time. Mm. I was exhausted. And you put it down to this. And, of course, when you're exhausted, you're irritable, you're cranky, uh, you know, you, mm. everything is wrong. And there was a doctor, she's passed now, sadly, called uh, Martine Miller-Johnson, who was on. And she was talking about menopause and about various other bits and pieces like that. And I talked to her, I escorted her out and said, did the usual, tried to get, tried to cop a free concentration. 100% <laughs> yeah. the perks said, of the Where game. do you think Alan learned it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it, she said, well, actually, do you know what? It, it might not just be the hours, it might be something else. She was based in Kilkenny at the time. She said, come down and see me. So I went down to see her and she did a full battery of tests. Yeah. And because she'd worked abroad and she'd worked in the NHS, Scotland in particular, she came back and said, very simple blood test, you have a thing called hemochromatosis. And I went, what? She said, it's known as the Celtic curse. I said, what? And like, because you're doing this, you're dealing with syndromes and all that yeah. kind of stuff all the time. And I come from a medical family. My grandfather's a doctor, my uncle's a doctor. Mm. Never heard of it. Never been mentioned by any of my GPs. She said, you've got too much iron in your blood. Yeah. And no, I'm too little, I'm anemic. I'd get B12 shots, I'd take iron tonic. She said, yeah, you're poisoning yourself, mate. And I went, what? What's all this about? Uh, she said, listen, come down and we'll talk about it. Anyway, she explained hemochromatosis to me, which is the most common genetic uh, disorder in this country. Right. By More far, no. Than cystic fibrosis, it's hemochromatosis. Absolutely. Yeah. And we are world's leaders in it. So there's well, one in... So, now, the numbers vary because so few... Well, not enough people have been tested. Yeah. But they reckon between one in five to one in eight have the gene, the single gene, right? Then if that person who has a, a single gene meets somebody else who has this, the single gene, yeah. Yeah. their kids have a one in two chance of having the double gene. And then they're in trouble. I have the double gene. My parents did. Yeah. My mother, actually, funnily enough, all her life believed that she was anemic. Because when I was diagnosed, I had to go back to them. And she said, no, that's nonsense. Are you sure I'm anemic? I've been taking iron tonics all my life. Yeah. Which accounted for... I mean, this is a terrible joke, and my brother told it at her funeral, so I, I think I'm safe enough saying this. Our family joke was, if you wanted to hide something from my mother, put it near the Hoover, because she'd never go near it. <laughs> and we had a family <laughs> joke about her not necessarily being, uh, you know, the ultimate in domestic goddesses. Good woman. But now we know why, right? She was knackered, knackered. all the time. Now, I think eight kids has something to do with that too. Yeah. But no, she physically was knackered. And she was taking iron supplements, which were actually making her worse. Yep. So wh what would you do then instead? Because I suppose it's easy enough to kind of go, I'll yeah. take the iron supplements, I'll feel better as a result. What, what, what did the doctor recommend once you were diagnosed? It's very, very simple, right? You go and you get a blood test. You, get, you ask your doctor for a ferritin test next time you visit. And they will do it and then uh, they will tell you how much iron is in your blood, whether it's too high, whether it's too low, whether you have the genetic marker for hemochromatosis. If you do, they go, OK, we'll take it in and you donate blood. And you donate blood, you might have to do it, depending on how high your levels are, you might have to do it Two, I had to do it three or four times initially, every yeah. uh, two months. Get the levels down, then once your levels are down, you maintain. Okay. That's and it. that's it, they'll call you back in. I, I, I um, get called into the liver centre in the matter. Yeah. Once a year, they do a check and say, yeah, you're grand, or no, we take some blood, and then you're grand for another year. But there's a lot of people then walking around in this country who are like, modern Thousands. life is... is is tiring me it's out, the kids, yeah. uh -huh. and they literally, it's, they could have hemochromatosis. And it's easily treatable. Easily treatable. Yeah. The problem, real problem with it is, is that when, when, when it becomes a problem, it manifests as something else. So you retain the iron in your body, but different people retain it in different places, yeah. right? It'll lodge in your heart, cardiomyopathy, uh -huh. which will kill you. It'll lodge in your liver, cirrhosis, which will kill you. Have you ever heard of people in this country with cirrhosis and then you find out afterwards, you go, your first instinct is, oh, they drank like a fish. Uh -huh. yeah. Then you hear afterwards, no, they didn't Never touch the drop yeah. going, How can that be? Mm. That's how it can be. Kidneys, pancreas, type 2 diabetes. What have we had in this country with late onset type 2 di diabetes? 
There's been an epidemic of it, yeah. right? And and hemochromatosis and its effects, it's a slow build up. Yeah. So it starts to affect people in their late thirties, early forties. You know, when you get things like late onset diabetes. I wonder how, how many type 2 late onset That's diabetes people have been tested for HA. And you can find out more at hemochromatosisior.com. Uh, uh, can we put, hopefully we'll put it on screen because it's not the easiest to spell, but you know, autocorrect will actually sort you out with that. You, you're looking fantastic. And we were, you, you know, you've come on, you've talked to us before. You had the two strokes and COVID. You, like you, you've had a lot of health issues and you look great. How are you doing? Well, I, I, I had a lot of brownie points in the bank. Okay. Like, I look it's fairly well documented that, that my first thirty years were uh, mm. reckless, fun. shall we say, fun, yeah. fun. And fun. I had a lot of fun, and I indulged in a lot of fun, and I indulged in a lot of stupid things. But I had fun doing that too. Then I grew up, yeah. And uh, as soon as family arrived and kids arrived, I just went right. I stopped smoking. I used to smoke sixty a day. I had. Funny enough, I had been quite um, active and athletic and sporty when I was younger. Yeah. I went back to that, went back to the gym. So I became a gym bunny. So I replaced b b bad, bad habits with other habits, good yeah. habits. And that put a lot... Of, I mean, I remember actually talking to the doctor at the time saying, but, but they gave me a list of stuff I should do after the strokes. And I said, but I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been living like a monk. And he said, well, that won't stop what happened to you. I mean, mm. like you could be Superman and if the little bomb goes off in your head, then it will drop you. But it will help with your recovery.